Have faith, my friend. You need only state your case with confidence and clarity. Commander Leveilleur, it is both an honor and a pleasure to meet you. I am Emmerich, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights. Alfino Leveilleur, at your service. Your reputation precedes you, Sir Emmerich. I think we will find that we have much in common. Speaking of reputations, yours towers over us all. Does it not? It does indeed, Lord Commander. I am not too proud to admit that I have followed your activities with an interest bordering on fascination. Full glad was I to learn that you would be joining us. Now then, shall we begin? We know full well that the Garleans will return in force ere long. What is more, we have yet to achieve a lasting victory over the Primal Menace. The Beast Tribes continue to summon their gods, and each incarnation is stronger than the last. Ishgard is not immune to these threats. I must reiterate that it would behoove your nation to rejoin the Aorzean Alliance. Once again, I must respectfully disagree. On what grounds? Despite their presence in Kurthus, the Ixel do not concern us. The territorial claims pertain to Gridanian lands, and it is the people of Gridania whom they harry. Consequently, the Holy See judges this to be a Gridanian affair, and Ishgard does not intervene in the internal affairs of other nations. Even were that not the case, our forces are wholly committed to the Dravanian conflict. We have not the knights to spare. As for the Garleans, we are not ignorant of history. We have observed the rise and expansion of the Empire, and we agree that it is only a matter of time before they resume their campaign in Eorzea. Then surely it would be in our best interests to present a united front. Mayhap one day, but not yet. Gaius van Belsar is dead, and the Legion of Conscripts he left behind lacks the will to fight. We think it highly unlikely that they will emerge from behind the walls of their castra for some time. Forgive me, but if Ishgard's position has not changed, why did you agree to this meeting? It was not only as a representative of Ishgard that I came here. Pardon? It is not within my power to change Ishgardian policy, regardless of my personal feelings. There is, however, one area in which I may exert a measure of influence. Concerns have been raised over the supplies House Fortin has offered to Revenant's Toll. These have led to calls for restrictions on the provision of aid to foreign powers. I can ensure that the shipments continue unabated. Sir Emmerich, we would be in your debt. No, you would not. For I require something in exchange. Of late, there has been a flurry of Dravanian activity, the purpose of which was not immediately clear. However, our astrologians have since observed alarming changes in the heavens. The dragon star waxes unnaturally bright, and there are whispers that it portends the resurrection of Midgard Sorma. The fallen guardian of Silver Tear Falls? That's absurd. Full many times have I gazed upon the dragon's corpse still wound around the Agrius, and wondered how different our world might be if it yet lived to plague the skies. I do not know, and I do not wish to know, nor does any son of Ishgard. Yet the mere presence of Dravanian forces is not sufficient grounds to send knights to Mordona, whatever our astrologians say. As I told you before, we have not the forces to spare. 
what we do. So you will intervene on our behalf if we agree to watch over the Keeper of the Lake. Do you accept these terms? I do. I will see that you are kept abreast of any developments. I regret that we could not come to a similar agreement on other matters, but I understand that you are not at liberty to make such decisions. Nevertheless, I hope that what we have accomplished here today will serve to demonstrate to your countrymen that we can work together towards a common goal. Mayhap one day we shall look back on this moment as the first step towards a united Eorzea. Mayhap we shall, Commander. What is the meaning of this? The caravan, my lord. It's been attacked. It was Iceheart, my lord. What? By the fury! All our precautions were for naught? The tales do not do you justice, warrior of light. Yes, I know who you are, and you know who I am. I was given the name Izel, but I earned the name Iceheart. This endless cycle of hatred, of bloodshed, of sorrow. You would see it continue, O oh noble warrior of light. In time, you will come to understand that what we do, we do for the greater good. For Eorzea. For Hydaelyn. Change has come to the Garlean Empire. The rumors are true then? The war of succession is ended. It is. A new emperor reigns in Garlemald. Who? The birth and all too rapid expansion of the Garlean Empire is commonly attributed to the strategic brilliance of Solus Zosgalvis, yet he did not rule alone. 
several members of the royal household also distinguished themselves during his reign. Nevertheless, it was the eldest son who stood to inherit the throne, until his most untimely passing. I thought us fortunate when I learned that the Emperor had died without naming a successor. Would that the Garlean Empire had died with him. T'was the grandson and his uncle who had the strongest claims, was it not? Indeed. Yet claims count for little without the power to assert them. High Legatus Varus Ye Galvis is a respected military leader. Not so his uncle. So young Varus has torn the crown from his uncle's grasp and taken his place at the head of the Empire. Given the troubled nature of his succession, the new Emperor will require time to seal his grip on power. Yet have no doubt but that he shall, for there are none left with strength enough to oppose him. Since the success of Operation Archon, the remnants of the 14th Legion and the forces occupying Alamigo have done naught but fortify their positions. But you can be sure they'll be ready to march on us again, if their Emperor gives the word. When? Not if. They say this Varus was so set upon Eorzean annexation that he spoke out against the Meteor Project. Plainly, the new Emperor's intentions are of great concern to us all. I propose that we set aside the Cartano dispute for the present. Well, I suppose we should be grateful if only the leaders of Ishgard would follow their example, and stop hiding behind their gates, praying for the coming storm to pass them by. <laughs> <laughs>